Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Thanks for joining me today. We're going to be taking a look at how a large format console can make it even easier to have great tracking sessions in your studio. I've got Rob Russell joining me. Great to see you, man. Hi, nice to see you, Mitch. So years of experience in all the major LA and Hollywood studios, yeah. Brian McKnight, Paul Abdul, Bobby Brown, movie uh, sessions, yeah. and, and uh, but also years spent designing and building studios for Absolutely. artists. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So we appreciate you, uh, you sitting down today, all the knowledge and expertise and wisdom nice. that you bring to this for us. So let's talk about tracking using a console. I think most of us, most of us watching this, have a DAW mm -hmm. and maybe an audio interface and yep. we're plugging in and we've got a mixer that runs on the screen and we're routing things that way. Yeah. But working with a console is a little bit different. Absolutely. And it has advantages. Big time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about it. Tell us about sort of the process of tracking using a console like this. So the whole idea of, of using a console is that you have immediate control over everything that you can see is happening during a session, mm -hmm. right? And the most important part in my mind and to the producers I've worked at is that the artists are completely comfortable and they don't have this, they don't even see the technology going on behind the session. It's all about the music they're recording. Right. So to me, that's where a large format console becomes, you can't replace it, mm -hmm. right? Because I can sit in front of this console and I can design how my headphone sends are set up and I can see all of my inputs in my gain staging of the microphones coming into my console and out to my DAW, right? Right. I can have multiple people working on a console. So I have an assistant engineer that's keeping up with headphone mixes of what artists like while I'm working on the sound that's coming in. Mm -hmm. um, it's just no better place to really make that technology transparent. Right, Amen. and that translates to even if you're working by yourself in a studio, or you're overdubbing a single instrument at a time or overdubbing vocals or recording a drum set, yeah. that's all still part of the equation and you and I have talked before about how the console really serves as the engineer's instrument. Absolutely. As they're, uh, as they're creating music. Yeah. The other part about a console is that it brings together the technology you need for tracking. So basically everything except for the conversion to get into the, the computer. You've got your preamps, you've got EQ, you've got headphone sends, yep. you've got effect sends yep. for reverb, all with no latency. Absolutely, zero latency. Right. This is where we all came from, right? Yeah, yeah, so that, um, that's a big yeah. deal. Yeah, it is. And talk back to, to make sure that you're communicating in a nice way to your, right. to your artist and setting that up. You mentioned tracking full band versus single instrument overdubs. I'll change how my headphone mix is set up in that, right? I may be on a rotary pot on an aux end during tracking because I need all this stuff going on, right? Mm -hmm. Multiple mixes. Where if I'm dealing with a single instrument overdub, just for me visually, to understand what they're hearing and make sure they get the sound they need in their headphones, I'll put my headphone mix on the small faders and feed that into my foldback. That way I can see exactly what's going on when they're mixed. And when they're not hearing the right thing, I can quickly get to it and get them into the space they need to be. Right. One thing we should do is for those who haven't worked on a console, many consoles today are inline consoles. Yes. And that's where this small fader that you mentioned comes in. Tell us a little bit about that and the way a console like this is set up. Yeah. So. This is an inline console, so you can think of it as I have two paths minimum at the same time that are coming to that console. So if that's maybe... For, for each channel strip. For each channel strip, absolutely. So if I'm recording a full band, I may use this small fader, right? I got a long fader and a small fader. The small fader is going to sit at unity gain and I'm going to be able to control my preamp and get the best gain structure. And then I may bump it around depending on what's going on, right? But mm. that's my input level to my DAW. Okay. Right? So I'm doing a big session where I got tons of inputs and I can see that that's my priority now is making sure what I'm catching, what I'm recording is done well. Right? Now that's going to change if I'm tracking, like I said, a single instrument overdub where I'm saying, okay, I may be hitting an outboard preamp and going right to my DAW or tape. Well, now I'm going to use these faders as a headphone mix because it's easy for me to see, right? I, I have my level that I'm hearing of what's returning and what I want to personally hear, mm -hmm. which is not a click blasting in my ear for the whole time, right? right? So I can make a mix that the artist is happy with on those and I can see them and get to them versus, you know, other mixing things that we would use the, the, the small fader for. Right. The console also gives you the opportunity while you're tracking to, first of all, you've got those premium quality preamps that yep. are in a large format yep. console. It's kind of part of the package, if Absolutely. you will. But you've also got the ability to EQ things 
on the way in and out. Yep. Some consoles even have uh, dynamics on, on each channel Absolutely. that you can apply to, uh, to tracking and things. So it's a way to, to uh, sort of precondition your signals as they're going in or, or to record it in a more finished fashion. Uh, you know what, in this, this console in particular, I can split my EQ, hmm. right? So I can say, hey, I just need to filter off some low end or give it a little bit of high end and I want to record that. I'll switch that section of the EQ to my small fader, which is feeding my buses that go to my DAW, and I'll take the bottom couple bands of the EQ and assign it to what I'm hearing in the control room, but that's not being committed. I'm playing around to see what I want. Now, there's been many times, and it's easy to do on an inline console, again, flexibility, that the artist comes in and goes, just print that, that sounds amazing. So you can easily flip those bands into the small fader to now you're committing to that sound, so. Right, so you have that versatility. Absolutely. That routing capability. And the routing, even when you're tracking, is very important because you're gonna come in, probably go direct back out unless you're bussing things for a, a submix or something. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna be monitoring on the large faders, as you said, but then it comes over to the center section yeah. of the console, which is where you're really controlling what's being heard by everybody involved with the session. Absolutely, and you may have multiple mixes, right? I learned that real fast doing orchestral stuff. The conductor gets one mix, the rest of everybody gets something else, right? Sure. So yeah, I may have one mix that's going to the drummer who really just needs to hear that click, right? Um, versus another mix coming off the console through aux ends and buses that I send to the singer who does not want the click and wants to be able to freely sing over the track. So um, yeah, your center section is where all that comes together where then you distribute it out to who should have what and at what levels and all that kind of stuff. It's also where you control what monitors you're listening to, if you have multiple sets of monitors, if, yep. you're, if you're bouncing a mix at the same time, not, well, you wouldn't be bouncing in this case, but if you're also recording a reference mix yeah. at the same time. So all those things can be done in a console like this because, again, all that flexibility that you have. Right, and that's the key, right? Like you said, being able to go, okay, I'm listening on a small set of monitors, right, mm -hmm. because I want this clarity and this mid-range forward to hear what I'm doing. But then I want to switch because the artist wants to come in and hear a concert. Okay, bang, I'm up to my mains and it's just all about fun, right? Right, right. Uh, so I get to listen to different things. All that's controlled. Or maybe we want to listen to a track they did five years ago. Well, they put in a, however that's connected, Bluetooth, CD, whatever, that. I don't know. <laughs> sure, yeah. <I> would, <laughs> and that comes back to my external returns. All that's in my center section as well as built-in stereo bus compressors and things like that that'll change the tone of your mix. Right, and speaking of that type of thing, consoles also typically will have a uh, insert point on each of the input channels. Or multiple insert points. Or multiple points. insert points so that you can be inserting a compressor if you yep. want, or a specialized EQ or some other processor. So this console, the Audient in particular, you have two inserts. You have one on your small fader and one on your large fader. Mm -hmm. So again, I could put an insert in that says, hey, I'm gonna do this soft compression on the input side to get, to get them to where I think they're tracked best. But on the back end, I'm gonna just crush them. <laughs> I'm just gonna hear what it sounds like because I'm not committed to that. So you can have different insert points at different points of your your gain staging and what you're doing uh, right. to fit what you want to hear and what you want to do. The other aspect of tracking is being able to get into action fast. Yes. And consoles really excel at that because you've got enough holes to plug into that yep. you can leave all your keyboards connected. You can have multiple mics kind of ready to go and put them on instruments and be ready to record. Absolutely. And this keyboard player thing, yeah, they plug them in, they're routed to the same place, they come up in the DAW the same time all the time, and that works phenomenal. But even once you're familiar with your console and you've spent some time and you've built that motor memory up of what's going on, man, you can get something up ultra fast because you've got your buses. You know where you plug stuff in, you wrote it down, here's my kick, one. Here's my snare, top two. Snare, bottom three. You just start hitting the buses and pushing the fader up and it's there, right? And it's that fast. Right. And that taking the whole technical side of it out of the equation lets the engineer also serve as a creator Absolutely. in the music. Now I'm not thinking about, oh geez, how do I route that microphone to this channel and I want it to come back here. That's not even an issue at that point, right? It's, what do I want the tone of that to sound like? And am I gonna use the onboard EQ or do I wanna plug in an outboard piece? It's about creating a sound and a tone versus just getting a signal to pass. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, there's so many advantages to using a large format console when you're tracking. I mean, it just is, it's so easy. It is easy and again, in my mind, it w was to make the artist comfortable. And mm -hmm. I think that's one of the successes I had 
working through my career is that my focus was that artist being comfortable. Not sitting out there wondering when they were going to hear themselves and they got headphones on, they know there's a mic and I don't hear anything. Hello, I don't hear anything. Forget that. That can't happen. And with right. large format consoles, it doesn't have to happen. Everything is quickly assigned and, and you can get to it fast. And right. The more comfortable that artist is, the happier the producer the is. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> the last point I want to touch on is having a large format console doesn't mean that you can't take advantage of what's in your DAW. So you still yeah. have all of the DAW capabilities as well. You're just creating what's called a more a hybrid workflow. Absolutely, and that really comes more into play when you are mixing. Right. Right, because yeah, you're using automation in your DAW. You're using plugins in your DAW. You're routing at the master output of the console to record back to your DAW where you may do some pre-mastering stuff and be able to listen to each one of those points. I want to hear my console. I want to hear how I screwed it up in pre-mastering <laughs> and then hear what I'm printing through my A to D and D to A converters, sure. right? So the ability to patch all that around and, and integrate it with your DAW is, uh, it's, it's huge. Yeah, phenomenally powerful. Rob, thanks so much for spending time with us today. It's just so fun to sit in front of a console it like this is. <laughs> and to get to work making music. So this is your room. We're not going to keep you away from uh, from doing your creating. But thanks so much for sharing your time and your yeah, knowledge and your coming. wisdom with experience. Appreciate right. it. Thanks, man. And thank you for joining me today. If you have questions about large format consoles, how one might work in your studio, please give your Sweetwater sales engineer a call. I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. <laughs>